This is the Blood Red Podcast from the Liverpool Echo. Hello everyone and welcome to the Blood Red Podcast where I'm delighted to say that after 40 long days since Champions League glory in Madrid, football is back. Um, you, I'm sure you did not miss last night. Liverpool started pre-season with a bang with a 6-0 win over the water against Tramir. Um, and if you thought that that long three-week wait between Wolves and the Champions League final was stretched on, well, you know, these 40 days, despite basking in Champions League glory, they've they've ticked by and uh, finally here we are. Football is, is upon us again. Obviously, you know, you can never make Firm conclusions after pre after the first game of preseason, but we will we will try our best to do that today after a very impressive showing from the Reds. Uh, I'm Sean Bradbury, your host for today, and I have with me after making her press box debut, a mere stroll from her Birkenhead home. It's Kiva O'Neill. Kiva, six 0 for your first game. You take that. Yeah, well, I feel like the stars aligned. Obviously, I got to be there in my hometown to make my debut six times, six goals, and I become an auntie for the sixth time as well yesterday. So you know. It's all there. It was meant to be. We also have Christian Walsh, who I'm sure you will all know, the host of Analyze and Anfield, now oversees various LFC projects for the Echo and uh, you know, former regular on the Blood Red pod. Chris, what was what was your debut like? Can you remember your first game in the press box? For the uh, Echo? For the Echo, yeah, it was at Fenway Park. That's if you can believe that. <laughs> I had to sort of look up because the, the, at that time I was all, all over the place, really, because um, I knew I did a couple of trips abroad and I did a couple of Anfield games. But it was the 1-0 Marco Borriello scored in the last minute, which was... Fantastic for me because obviously it was the first time I was against deadline. Um, not necessarily for the for it was more of a paper based thing now, and the idea of a podcast was 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 just a, a far flung notion. But uh, yeah, you know, last minute goal I had to do a couple of rewrites uh, for, for for the web, and um, yeah, it was it went to the green eyed monster and saw. Um, I think that's what they call it over there. I yeah. should know that really. I'm going back <laughs> over there next week. But you can brush up. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I, can, yeah. I, can I can do the reading on the plane. Um, <laughs> so yeah, one nil um, in the Fenway Park. So not six goals then. Not I was six. like, no, I can't who, quite match who that passed one. it to him? Who scored the game? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, let's start digging into that madness last night as, as first games of preseason go. That was really something. Let's start with a general sense of the game. It, it was just for me watching it in the office here and, you know, do, helping cover it for the blog and what you guys were sending back. It was just a match that felt alive with possibilities that it looked like lost on none of those players, especially the youngsters that they had a real chance to prove themselves. And Klopp was true to his word, gave, gave a load of young lads a chance. And I think there was also that, that little tingle of being European champions, the momentum of that seemed to be carried into the game. Start with you, Kiva. What what was your sense of the occasion and, and the atmosphere last night? Yeah, it was really good, you know, to be there at Prenton Park. There's obviously a lot of a lot of fans around the world and a lot of fans around Merseyside. So, you know, to this is the fourth time now they've gone to Prenton Park and I feel like it's sort of like a give back from Klopp to like, you know, the wider sort of communities of Merseyside. So I really just enjoy that and hope it continues because it's great for Tramier as well and obviously the local economy and my lovely town, Birkenhead. Um but yeah, just a great night, you know. Um, I'm glad that I chose to write about Bruce to be for the game because then <laughs> I just watched him with a Hawkeye vision and he was just doing everything good. And we haven't seen him play before and well, I haven't seen him for like any of the unders and he was just magnificent watching him. I was just like, okay, so Jürgen's maybe made the decision not to buy anyone and I feel like this lad can fill the boots of being that, you know, that fifth striker. Mm. Well, we'll come on to Brewster in, in more detail soon, but Chris, 6-0, you can't get carried away with the first game of pre-season, but a start to go, that was a pretty decent one. I'm already carried away, I've booked <laughs> Istanbul. Uh, it, it's, it, yeah, it, it, these these type of games, everybody says that they mean zero and, you know, I'm sure Klopp would say if they won 6-0 or if they lost 6-0, that it means very little. It's all about getting minutes and legs and preparation and, and understanding a few tactical intricacies. But I think if you play a League One side who in previous years have given Liverpool some pretty tough games, you know, I can remember there was, there was a, a very easy 4-0, but apart from that, it was a 3-2 last year. Uh, it was 1-0 um, a couple of years before when I think Danny Ings scored late on to, to, to sort of blow them away 6-0. And of, of course, they weren't at the best and, and they're just in their early stages of preparation as well. However, to score six goals, to put on a show for the fans, and to also just, you can split this into into different compartments, really. You always get the the young players who are really exciting and you think that they're going to be world beaters and then you won't hear from them again for another year because off they go back to, yeah. to, to the academy or, or wherever and you only see them on little social media clips of great goals that they've scored over the next 12 months. Then you've got the players who sort of, you've, you've maybe forgotten about a little bit uh, or you didn't consider um, and you see them doing something a bit interesting. So, you know, Nathaniel Klein pinging one in from, uh, from from 20 yards is something that nobody really expected in pre-season. You've got James Milner in the number six. 
you know, I don't know if he could do that in the hustle and bustle of a Premier League game, but it's that's an interesting option that he went for. And then you've got the sort of a little bit of everything, and, and that's what Ryan Brewster brought because it was it was a, a performance which really excited. It's almost like he's the he's the worst kept secret on Merseyside, mm-hmm. but at the same time. You know, there's been so much hype about him. He's a Champions League winner, but he hasn't actually played a competitive minute for Liverpool. So it's a really interesting situation with him. To, to win 6 0 against the League One side in pre season, you know, people will dismiss it. And I, I'm sure, you know, Jürgen will be playing it down himself. But you, you can't really ask for more. You know, no injuries. Oxley Chamberlain got 45 minutes in his legs. Everybody looked fresh. Everybody looked happy. Um, and yeah, optimism abounds because it's it's it, it's the sort of result which you can you can hopefully take and, and, and move on into preseason at least and, and give us some hope going forward. It mm. felt like a night of possibility, you know. All the preseasons, like you said at the beginning, there, there's been you know players that have you know had shone in preseason and then sort of you know gone back into the shadows of the academy or moved on elsewhere. Where last night felt like you know even like players like Harry Wilson, Ryan Kent, everyone was energetic and doing mm. bits and it felt like they could carve open an opportunity here to play for Liverpool. It feels like, you know, we're not making these big summer signings and it feels like there's more chance now than ever, even though we've got the best team we've ever had. Yeah. It, it just feels like this possibility for these young stars. Mm. Well, let's let's go back to Booster then. The, the man who stole the headlines, two goals and an assist. Give you your the debut piece from the press box that we've we've already mentioned there uh, was was focused on him. You know, he's been, he's been touted for a while as the, the young lad who could be the next one to make a breakthrough. Klopp's not been shy and kind of talking him up and suggesting about his potential. He couldn't have done much more to impress in that first half. You can see why he's so highly rated. You know, as I said, I haven't seen him play a minute and watching him for them 45, I was just glued to him. He's just so composed and confident. And, you know, Manny Montu's trying to sense it off. He's no, he's no, you know... No fool. He's literally like, he's a giant and really strong. And Brewster was just running rings around him. And, you know, obviously the defender gave a good account of himself, but was left lost a few times from him. It's just, his interplay and his one-twos with all different players. He seemed to just, he was like a domino effect of spark and the creativity Mm. of Wilson and Kent. And he just seemed to have this, like, not like a chip on his shoulder, but like the confidence, you know, but like he knows... I just feel like he's got so much potential and, you know, it is only 45 minutes against Tramia in a pre-season friendly, but what he showed in that little moment was, like I said, he re-announced himself on the stage and hopefully, you know, going forward he, throughout this pre-season, he can continue to do that and then just build on that. Mm. Chris, there's, there's a danger that you don't want to build him up too much at this stage and I think Klopp was funny after the match touching on this. He first of all he was asked and he said he didn't want to play down Bruce's performance, but then he also said I could have, I could probably have scored one of those goals. So, you know, he's trying to he's trying to play it down the middle, except that, you know, he's got a great talent on his hands, but also not not kind of blow too much smoke uh, there. What what's what's your take? Is he is he one that's really gonna make a breakthrough this season? I think Klopp's backing himself with his off the ball movement there because <laughs> I, yeah, they were easy finishes, but both both goals, he's he's very quick to sort of lose his marker and find that space. Um, mm. I don't know which one he thought he would have scored, um, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> maybe, the maybe, maybe the other, because he's just, they would have hit his head because he's six foot four, but <laughs> I thought it was a decent header and I, and I thought the second goal, yeah, it was an easy finish. Um, but at the same time, he's he, he's ghosted behind his marker and, and, and there's a reason why he's he's got that easy finish because he's unmarked. I, f- I think at this stage of pre-season, i.e. the very, very start, you need a player like Brewster, who obviously is coming with him with a bit of expectation, but also mm. a bit of mystery. It's far better for him to to be doing these kind of things than not. Um, you know, I'm sure if he'd if he'd have a, a bit of a an industrious 45 minutes where he wasn't getting much change out of Manny Monsi, and and there was a couple of little glimpses, and then you know, Jürgen says afterwards, you know, well, yeah, he didn't score, but there was a sign here and a sign there of what he's capable of. That's a bit of a harder sell than the lad scored two goals. He set up another um, and his all-round play. Um, uh, really impressed. I think at the, at his age, you've always got an opportunity to impress because he's quick. Yeah. Um, and against a defence, you know, a League One defence. That's no, you know, disrespect to Tramia, but a League One defence. I think pace is a is a real attribute against a defence like that. Um, and even when you sort of get called up into, let's say, a Premier League game, I think if you've got pace to burn, which he does have, um, it's it's 
that that's something that defenders can't deal with sometimes. Mm. Um, the good thing is that it looks like he's got the finishing ability. It looks like he's got the smarts. It looks like he's got the build-up play. He was dropping off, which really impressed me as well. He's in this unenviable position where everyone who's moaning about Klopp not signing anybody should probably direct the tweets to him because it's all his fault. Um, and I'd love to watch that, to be honest, to see him just sitting <laughs> on his phone, just just replying to all the, all the moaners. But... It, this is all down to him because Klopp and his backroom staff back him so much. Um, there's noises out of Melwood that you know the senior pros who, who train with him just say he's, he's unreal and he's he, he could be next level in terms of ability. Um, the type of noises that were getting made about Michael Owen back in the day. Mm. Um, you've got to remember that he's what, 19, 18, 19? Still, he's still a teenager. Um, there's obviously the, the, the slight concern about how a long-term injury can have an impact, but it yeah. looks like he's... He looked sharp enough yesterday, he looked quick enough. Um, so, you know, the jury is out, but it's still very much leading towards one way at the moment that he's got a big part to play in some way, even if it's a case of he rests the legs of Salah, Mane, Firmino for the League Cup, for the FA Cup, for maybe a couple of the, what we hope will be easier, home ties in Europe if they, if they draw, you know, another Red Star, for example. That you know, if if that is his role at this age, then he's he's doing more than enough to 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 justify Liverpool having faith in him and, and not necessarily right now spending fifty sixty million on a front three option. Mm. Well, as you've alluded to there, he he is a potential solution to a transfer dilemma for Klopp. And looking onto another one now, Moreno's left um, and he's 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 found a new club. He's uh, joined Villarreal, and there's still that sense of who who's the backup for Robertson, who's the deputy left back. We'll start with you on this one, Kiva. There were two different teams from the Reds last night and, and in each half, a youngster had the chance to throw their name in the hat, I suppose, for for being that that number two left back. Who caught your eye out of uh, LaRucci and Lewis or both of them? Yeah, they both caught my eye, but in the first half, it, it has to be said, LaRucci was just unstoppable. I, I think I called him last night a steam train. He was just bulldozing his way. You know, sort of, you remember the goals of like Alberto Moreno at, at Tottenham, that sort of just... Jaden run through the pit and then just score and he just had everything good about that goal in him last mm. night. There was it was just bizarre watching him. He he'd pick up the ball at, at the back and then somehow he'd be in the six yard box having a shot and you'd be like, where did he come from? He just looks so so good and like you could hear in the press box, few people like, who is this kid? You know, like it was sort of a, a lot of excitement was growing for him. He just he looks like we. I know the transfer dilemma has been solved watching him. I know it's 45 minutes, but I was just like, wow. Um, I know I think he featured in the FA Cup final. I think Conor Dunn was speaking about it before. And, you know, he he's had moments, obviously, where people have the attention sort of come on him, but I'd never seen him play or really heard of him before yesterday, to be honest. And, oh, my God, he's won me over. I was just like, I want to, can't wait to see him again because he just, he looked like a 100-metre runner, sprinter, playing football, he just looks so quick and dynamic and just everything, you know, Andy Robertson's been doing for Liverpool the past couple of seasons is what I think LaRucci could be for Liverpool and provide, you know, that that full back backup. Mm. There was a bit of buzz around him when he signed, I remember, um, and a couple of people came out and sort of said, oh, keep an eye on this this guy. And then he, he's just not faded into obscurity, he just faded into the youth setup as as, as, as players do. Um, you know, he, he wasn't a Sepp van der Berg, for example, where, you know, even if he's playing for the under 23s, people want to know his progress. I think he's by nature as a left back, people just don't really get excited by left backs, but he was a winger. He's been uh, moved back as a full back. And yeah, I, I agree with Kiva. I thought he was really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, raw, of course, uh, a couple of crossfield balls where you go, that would be snapped upon if it was a little bit more of a, an intensive game. But in general, very, very promising. Um, I think what he brings is 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 that energy and directness. And again, it's a little bit like Brewster. If, if you're playing fullback in a club system, you, you need more than than pace and you need more than directness. But it gets you a long way. I think you obviously need that final ball because Robertson and Alexander Arnold are two players who very much have to create, and and you have to have that technique and that mm. and that cunning to do that. But if you can sort out your physical attributes first, then then you know you're you're on a good path and and it certainly feels like that. Compare him to to Lewis, I think, you know, with Lewis it's it's a case of 
he's playing a lot of positions for the under under 19s, under 18s, under 19s in the youth league, under 23s. He, he could play centre mid, he mm. could play left mid, he could play left back. Uh, so he's got that strength to his bow, whereas Larucci hasn't. But if you're looking at a specialist left back at the moment, it would say Larucci's probably got the nod. Uh, you're, you're looking at both of those and you're saying they'll probably be third choice, third, fourth choice because there's Gomez, there's Milner. I think Klopp would look to solve uh, a problem, let's say, if Andy Robertson, God forbid, got injured for a, yeah. for a, for a fair amount of time. Um, he'd look to solve it within the senior squad, but it's good to know that, yes, caveat, only for five minutes against Tramia, but they've, they've, they've got things in reserve there where it, it wouldn't be an absolute death knell of the season. I wouldn't be surprised if Klopp does what he done with Alexander Arnold and just drops him in at some point in a big game, and he goes from there. Just you know, you can see almost his career mapping out before him. After last night, I was just like, yeah, this is it. Well, very exciting times. Moving on from the talented youngsters, let's go to well, it sounds ridiculous saying this, but I guess one of the elder statesmen of the of the teams who featured last night, Divock Origi. Start with you, Kiva. Fresh from signing his new contract, Big Div, given the armband in the second half, led led his side out. Um, look pretty sharp. Yeah, there was a. I think did he give the ball to Woodburn who set up a goal, didn't he? I think for Casey yeah. Jones, yeah. He he just looked. You know, sometimes in preseason when the older players just look like that bit more quality, sort of looked better than everyone else in a in a respectable way to everyone. Um, he it's just like the ink's still fresh, isn't it? Pretty yeah. much, and he's like stepped out as you know got his reward as being captain for the second half and. You know, it's a it's a big gonna be a big season for Divock and um he just showed composure again last night. His finish was just obviously a lovely Matip likes to find him now, two assists in two. <laughs> for, um so he launched the ball over the top and then he just sort of took it in his in his stride and went past Scotty Davis and, and scored a lovely goal. Um so yeah, I think he'll he'll just be have a relaxed sort of pre season like that, you know, not doing too much but his quality will obviously get him goals as well. It's what Kiva says. You know, you can tell when a senior player comes onto the pitch in those type of games sometimes and they're the sort of automatically elevated and it's just the touch. And he, he didn't really do that in the couple, past couple of pre-seasons. You know, he, he come on and sometimes you'd sort of think, is, is, is he meant to be an under 23s player or is he meant to be a, a senior pro who's been at Liverpool for f- four years? But... The, the, he looked like a grown up. He looked like a, 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 an actual pro now, and obviously his backs up because you know in a good way because he's a European champion. He scored in Madrid. He was huge against Barcelona. We know about Newcastle and Everton, uh, and he's just signed a contract. So, but he he came on with the impetus and the just the aura of somebody who's going to be a, a, you know an important cog in this yeah. in this system. The same way Milner does, you know, you, you look at Milner and you go, I mean, he is a grown up, he's 34 <laughs> nearly, but you look at Fabinho and you go, of course, he's he's somebody who's played a big part in being a, a, a European Cup winner side. Matip, you can say that Gomez, and now you can add Origi to that in terms of he just had that poise around him um, and that sort of belief that, yes, you know, we we are better than, 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 than Tramier. Uh, I've got nothing to prove, but I'm going to prove it anyway mm. because I'm going to take this long ball down with a fantastic first touch oh, round the keeper. So it's very much, yeah, it, 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 he looks like, for the first time I feel since, because even it was weird, even even going back towards the back end of last season, he's obviously producing these performances off the bench and he's he's coming on, he's scoring against Newcastle, but then he starts up front against Barcelona, you're going... God, you know what? Yeah. What? Yeah. What? What? You know, is 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 that is that what you do? Is is that you know? Did I mean Klopp? Probably, I know it was a tactical thing, but at the new camp, he went for Wayne Aldum in that position over him. Um, so obviously, it was sort of on Klopp's mind, but now I think there's no doubt about it. You know, Divock Origi is part of a let's say 15, 16 man nucleus of of players who are going to have a lot of minutes this season and play a big part and, and he very much deserves it. He seems like he believes in himself yeah. now. I feel like them goals have given the confidence and you could see it last night. You do say, you know, I said before about Bruce's shoulders back, like that confidence and Origi had that, obviously looks the senior player, but he just, 
he just looks different now. Like it's changed him. And obviously with the, the no release clause and stuff like that, mm. he knows he's a part of Liverpool's future. Jürgen Klopp wants him here. So just go forward now and keep scoring goals. Mm. I think it's the first time as well that what you've got to remember is the first time that he's really sort of had an opportunity properly at Liverpool in terms of when, when Klopp first came in, I mean, he played in his in his first game at Tottenham, mm. which is lovely symmetry, obviously, because of what happened in Madrid. But <laughs> he, old, he he got picked because I think Sturridge was injured. Um, and then he goes on a good run. And, you know, he's, I think he scores five and five over December. And he's doing really well as the, as the one, or sometimes as the two in a four four two alongside Sturridge. And then the few next Mori tackle happens. And that's oh, the yeah. that, that sort of... I don't think people can uh, sort of understand how disruptive that was to him because yeah. he ends up he ends up going to Wolfsburg and it's, you know he goes to Wolfsburg side who are in free fall at that time um, and they haven't got they certainly haven't got their act together on or off the pitch and they nearly go down and this is a team who were Bundesliga champions eight years ago mm. um, and then he comes back and he's under twenty threes and he's he, you know he doesn't get his first minutes in the Premier League until December the first which was obviously the, the Merseyside derby. So the, the second half of the season is the first time when he's had a, a real opportunity to have minutes, you know, with, without the sort of the, the, the early Klopp era where mm. obviously the, the whole team is finding the way and so is, is Jürgen Klopp. He's walked into a team or he's certainly coming off the bench for a team towards the back end of last season, which is very much in tune with how Klopp wants to play. Mm. And that's massive for him because he's probably had the summer off. He's come back and he's gone, right, so I know exactly what Klopp expects of me. I know exactly how to play in this system. I know I'm a good footballer. The, the, the things just work together. And also I've got the goal in Madrid to, to, to live off forever. So it, it, it it's it's all of those elements where you, what you now have is a 24-year-old who's, who's ready to take the next step at Liverpool. Mm. The pitch invasion, just to add quickly, every kid seemed to just run straight to him, <laughs> to Origi. And obviously, you know, to see like Salah, Mane, Firmino, he's up there now with them for what he's done for Liverpool. He's a hero, and to see that last night, that sort of showed it to me that like you know the you could hear like kids when he was walking up and down in the the pre match warm up, and they were like Origi, Origi, like you know he's the word on every kid's every kid's mouth at the minute. You could see a few Origi tops. So you know he he's definitely up there now as like that Liverpool superstar. He's a great guy. He's a, you know I've only sort of interviewed him a couple of times in, in in various little bits. But anyone that you sort of anyone who ever even a social media presence, you know that he's he's yeah. a humble he's a humble guy. And he you know he's playing for the under twenty three sort of this time last year, um, or certainly at the start. And you know Solanke was above him. Ings was above him for a while until he got sold. Um, you know, he was, he was pretty much a fifth choice striker in the traditional sense of the centre forward. Mm-hmm. You'd have Firmino, you'd have Salah, you'd have Ings, and you had Solanke, and then you'd have Divock Origi. Never moaned, never kicked up a fuss, never agitated for the move, got his head down and worked hard. But he's just, he, he, he's, a, he's a clock player in that sense. He's, he's somebody who, who, will, who will work really hard. And my firstborn boy or girl is going to be called Divock. <laughs> so we've, we've got a statue here and a firstborn yeah. here. I mean, wow. What what better tributes could you have to uh, to Mr. Origi? Um, right, well we'll move on from Divock to Harvey Elliott, um, who by all accounts is going to be the next signature that the Reds secure this summer, the second summer signing. Um, we'll start with you on this, Chris. So he was he was at the game, he was spotted in the stands. What do you make of this? Well, I guess we better say potential deal. Still, that doesn't feel like it's quite over the line, and and what it says about the current transfer strategy. I think what it's saying is that. Liverpool at the moment, so the, the, there's a the, there's really interesting stuff that if you take out Alexander Arnold um, from the Champions League final, I think everybody was aged in the starting 11, 25 to 28. Now they are peak years. They are, you know, Liverpool are, are, are European champions because there's still more to come from them. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. You know, you look at players like Fabinho, Andy Robertson. Um, you know th- those kind of players, and the 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 sort of very very young in 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 a, in a general football sense. But you know, twenty five to twenty eight is peak years. So what you're looking at there is you need to start planning for what happens in three years' time when the twenty eight year olds become thirty one, the twenty five year olds become twenty eight. Yeah. And you don't want to wake up one one day and basically you, you're playing a 32 year old Roberto Firmino whose who's legs are on the wane and therefore he isn't as good. You've got a 31 year old Mo Salah who you know you need that sort of next step and what's gonna what's gonna happen. I think what also is is happening here is that Liverpool are trying to get ahead of the curve and 
Liverpool have got where they are because of two main reasons, coaching and recruitment. Mm. Um, and the coaching, they're ahead of the curve because Jürgen Klopp's one of the best managers in the world. And the recruitment, they're ahead of the curve because of analytics. Um, and basically, you look at sort of a team like Manchester United's transfer strategy and how they, they, their analytics just sort of consist of just buying players who seem to be doing all right in England or Wales in Daniel James's case. And there's no real strategy, there's no real structure. So for me, it's I think Liverpool are looking at this and going, well, what happens when, because eventually it will happen, what happens when everybody gets on the level playing field? Because it's not going to be a secret forever. No. People will know how analytics work and basically what the type of profile you look at. And it's a case of what now separates us from them. Because if, if Bournemouth are doing what Liverpool are doing, obviously Liverpool will always have first dibs on players, but Bournemouth might find a player that Liverpool might have wanted in the past, that kind of mm-hmm. thing. So I think what they're doing now is looking to the future in the sense of the next big thing that will differentiate us is having this team, bringing them up from a young age, bringing them through, making a clear pathway into the into the, into the the first team and going from there. Um, and I think that's what Liverpool are now lining up is let's get some really good under-18s who will probably start in the under-23s if, if what we're hearing is about Van der Berg. I know he's going to be part of the senior squad as well, but I think he'll play under-23 games. Harvey Elliott seems like he's ready for under 23 football already. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if there's maybe one or two others who, not, maybe not this summer, but come through the door in that yeah. same sense. And what they will now do to try and get a head start on all of their rivals is make sure that you've got these players in a clear pathway. So when Van Dijk turns 32, you've got Sepp van den Berg who turns 21, 22, and he's ready to just slot in there, either alongside them or with them. And I think it's just looking over the next five years because. You know, Liverpool at the moment have, have, have been brilliant in recruiting people like Andy Robertson, Fabinho, um, you know, Oxley, Seamus, Salad, of course, Mane, those type of players. The next thing is, okay, we might be able to do that forever. So what, how else are we going to get an advantage on on other teams? And and this is how you do it, by, by getting the best 16, 17, 18-year-olds in Europe mm. and making sure that they've got a clear pathway to, to becoming future stars. No, this rate, there'll be uh, 12-year-olds playing for the under-18s. <laughs> that, that's what you see, I reckon. Liverpool I mean, will sign a 14-year-old one day and you just go, why, like, you know, sort of, I remember being on a podcast when he was born, you know what I mean? It was just like, that's, that's what you'll see. Um, staying with Harvey then, Kiva, you bumped into him last night after the game. Yeah. Be- Bezzy's now? Yeah, good mate, you know. Um, I didn't really want to, like, obviously he hasn't signed, but he was there, which makes you think, you know, it's pretty much on the cards and... It's just a matter of time now. Um, I think he was possibly with his dad, but I'm not sure. He looked really excited to sort of be there in like a, you know, I haven't signed yet, but I'm going to be a part of this club. Um, so, yeah, saw him in the hallway and just sort of said to him all the best, you know, wish wished him all, all the luck for hopefully becoming a Liverpool player in the in the coming days. Mm. 2003, he was born. That makes me feel it a is. bit sick. It does feel a bit wrong, doesn't it? You, you're younger than us, like, by a considerable length. I mean, that's <laughs> And it makes me feel yeah, bad, Yeah, so. imagine how it makes us feel. Oh. Like I'm, I'm still clinging. I'm, me and Milner, there's a few there's a few months difference, so if he's still winning lactate tests, there's, there's, there's still hope for me, just about, like. Um, <laughs> it's right. not over yet, Sean. Not, <laughs> not quite. The dreams lives. <laughs> um, final word then. Well, well, we'll go to Jürgen Klopp and what he said after the game, and obviously get perspective of you guys on this. Very interesting words from the boss um, when he was speaking to reporters on the, on the pitch after the match. Asked about the prospect of signings, and he said, "We have we have bought them already, and you don't realise it." And referencing Brewster, Oxley, Chamberlain, and it's it's not the first time he's kind of intimated this this view um, ahead of preseason. He's been referring to those guys in particular as new players. Uh, start with you on this, Chris. What what do you make of that? And I guess Klopp saying that from a decent position, given how Brewster just played. Yeah, uh, it feels like it feels like Tram has become this almost like you know. Dawn of Pistols high noon shootout with, with with Klopp and the media because every every time every every time they get to Tramia, um, you know, Kiva will sort of tell you this as well from from last night. It's it's it, it's not like your typical um, press conference, is it? Where he sits behind the desk? No, he's just on the pitch. He's on the pitch, congregating. Surrounded by because the, there's a lot more access yeah. because it's Tramia. Yeah, so there's fan media there, and and, and 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 you know those you know basically people are allowed to ask questions, which I think is great, and and it gives a different perspective. Um, and you get asked questions about transfers naturally, and it feels like every single year there's there's something that is said 
where he sort of got to have a retort to, to, to whoever's <laughs> asked the question, just going, just calm down. We're not going to sign absolutely everybody. Um, so uh, this is just the latest in a long, in a long line of Tramia sort of flashpoints where it's it sort of, <laughs> he, he comes out with this statement and everyone's going, what's he saying that for? Why is he saying that? We do, does he not realise what we don't realise? And the answer is, no, no, he, he probably realises a lot more than we do. Um, so... I've, you know, trusting Klopp is, can only go so far sometimes, but yeah. you know, he's got a pretty good track record of making these statements at Tramia and throughout pre-season in general and saying, look, it's all going to be fine. I know what I'm doing. You've got to trust me here. And it works out okay. Uh, so, I can, I, you know, do Liverpool, may, do, might they need a little bit more strengthening here there? Yeah, I, I think they probably do. Um, but... Is is you know is Klopp and have Liverpool been the club over the past five years uh, to, to to throw out thirty million on somebody just because of a potential injury? No, and the reason they are where they are is because they haven't done that. Mm. You look at somebody like Manchester United now, or someone like Everton, who have a, a really inflated wage bill. Liverpool are a very very well run club, uh, and you've got to trust in the process. You talk about Oxley Chamberlain, you talk about Bruce there, you can throw in Adam Lallana in there. Uh, you can you can throw in one of the left back the youngsters at left back. You can throw in. He'll probably be loaned out, of course, but somebody like Ben Woodburn. There's, there's there's there is this whole host of players, Harry Wilson as well, of course, yeah. who, who probably will get more of an opportunity now. Shakiri's out injured, so you, Klopp Klopp knows what he's doing. I know that's a, you know, but he did win a European Cup, and and a lot of thought goes into this situation. Um, you know, the last last year there was a, a lot of. You know, you're not buying a goalkeeper. And he's like, well, let's just wait and see. Here comes Allison. People were moaning about Fakia, not coming. They win a European Cup without him. You know, this kind of thing. I think it was the year before. It was Jordan Henderson playing as a number six, <laughs> and okay, he moved slightly towards the end of last season, but he's pretty much a European Cup winning captain as a you know playing in that position that he fashioned for him. So this will happen all the time, um, and ultimately what Klopp says goes and if he's saying it then it's not just because he doesn't want to spend money and he doesn't trust you know the the, the process he just genuinely believes that Oxley Chamberlain and Brewster are new players and you know what is it 30 minutes for Oxley Chamberlain yeah. last season zero minutes for Rian Brewster you can't argue with that it really mm. you can't argue with that likewise Gomez you know he was pretty much a non-entity um, between the, the months of December and, and, and April Um so he's almost like a new sign. He's certainly a welcome addition once more. it's it, it, You've got to trust him what he says. Mm. Diva, let's have your take on this. I mean, Klopp did then go on to say, the transfer market is open. We see, we'll see we see what we do, but I don't think it'll be the biggest transfer window of all time, which very much fits in with the, the steer we've had from the club and the noises come out, coming out of Liverpool um, while this transfer window's been open. Do you, do you share that view? Do you think it's the right approach from the Reds at this stage? I mean, like Christian says, you've got to trust in the process and, you know, wouldn't be surprised if Klopp does pull a sign and out on the last day of the season like he did with Oxley chamberlain You know, if he's completely convinced he needs a player to fill a position, he will eventually get that player. It might yeah. take another season like we've seen with obviously Van Dijk, Allison, but he'll wait for the right person. He's just not going to rush and bring someone in the, you know, for 40 million that's not going to do the job he wants them to do. So, you know, I'd, I just wouldn't be too concerned by what he said. And, you know, you've got to be patient with with him as a manager and obviously Michael Edwards and that whole, you know, they, they're not soft to use a, a Liverpool phrase. You know, they'll have, they'll have names on the board and by the end, by the end of the August 8th, I think it is, yep. isn't it? Mm-hmm. You know, we I think we'll see one or two through the door. And, you know, we I think as well we can depend on these. You know, watching Brewster last night, I'm fully convinced by him. I know it's 45 minutes, but <laughs> I'm convinced Oxley Chamberlain, you know, I think he, he, he didn't look, he looked a little bit rusty last night, but he'll come into himself throughout the season. And, you know, these players who haven't played, they are like new signings. And, you know, it is easy to just sort of say that and to give the fans that, but, you know, they will have an impact over the season and there's no point in messing with what is a great group of players by bringing in someone who's on too much wages or, you know, just you don't want to... It's such a balanced squad right now and, you know, everyone seems to be happy and it's going in the right direction. So, you know, I don't think he'll want to mess with that either. I think there's two things to play. The first one is that Liverpool traditionally work a transfer window in advance or, or a year in advance. So... 
it's not they, they would have sort of identified who they wanted last summer if that makes sense um, so this summer they'll be working on looking at who they want to bring in next summer mm. and it also goes back to that idea of peak in terms of next summer I think for example that they're going to have to probably invest fairly heavily in the midfield because James Milner will be one year older and one year closer to retirement and Lallana his contract will run out and we wait to see if he gets a, a new deal um, and he'll be 32 by then mm. And then you look and then look at this is not me saying they're, they're going to sell these players, but you know, Lovren becomes 31, um, and then the front three are all 29. And it's at that point where you say, right, there is a gap here for a 22, 23 year old on big money who will be getting games because the players won't be playing or they might have departed or, 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 or something like that. So I think a quiet summer this summer might also be in preparation for. What's next summer come? what's to come what you're saying is Mbappe 2020 i nailed on <laughs> that, right. that, that was a joke by the way <laughs> before you anyone before anyone gives me the brackets treatment <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm back on the Blood Red podcast I don't want to get bracketed um <laughs> Yeah. Well, on that note, uh, we'll we'll leave it there. Um, lots to be excited about, even though it is only the first game of preseason. But a six 0 win, plenty of big performances. Young stars looking like they're they're going to fit in. So um, yeah, uh, on to the next one, which is Bradford on Sunday at three pm, and we'll be back with the Blood Red podcast on Monday to take a look at that one. Thank you very much.